Hello, everybody. Here we are at EclipseCon in lovely Santa Clara, and we've got another guest with ourselves. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, my name is Wayne Parrott. I'm with Genua Tech. I'm the Vice President of Product Development. You're, you're very involved in the Eclipse world, building your, your product portfolio on top of it, essentially. But for folks who, who don't know you that well, can you give us a quick introduction of what Genua Tech yeah, does? We're an Eclipse technology company. We've been involved in the Eclipse movement since it was first open source, so we've uh, been developing products actively for almost seven years now. On top of Eclipse, the areas we service are uh, Eclipse developer tools and uh, Eclipse plug-in management and distribution. I remember coming across you way back when, and you know, My Eclipse was the first thing that you had, mm -hmm. and, and by that I don't mean My Eclipse, it's actually called My, my, my Eclipse. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and so, I, I mean, that was sort of like, the if I remember, the first product that you guys had, and it seems like a lot of the portfolio that you have is sort of built upon that same basic idea of packaging up a bunch of Eclipse stuff and adding in some of your own stuff and having like a pretty actually a pretty affordable IDE that people, that developers exactly. can buy. Exactly, yeah. The first product is my Eclipse Enterprise Workbench. Uh, we now have three levels of that. that we first rolled out with a real simple entry level, uh, sold it at $30, $30 level, and then we've now got a, a pro level version which uh, builds beyond kind of the, the traditional Java EE developer tools and technologies. And then uh, we added, uh, this last year, we added uh, what we call the blue edition of my Eclipse, and that is for targeted specifically for WebSphere and uh, IBM Rational uh, developers. They're looking for alternative uh, development tools. In, in addition to the MyEclipse developer tools, we branched out this last year into the area of plug-in management and distribution, uh, or really you can think of it as Eclipse product management and distribution, which has uh, not been a well-served community, but with the, uh, the advent of the RCP platform, uh, we're seeing a lot of business type of applications or desktop applications, which are built on top of the same technology, plugins and all. And we have a product called Pulse, and Pulse is uh, geared towards servicing both helping developers build their own tool stacks, but also in addition to that, uh, manage uh, uh, enterprise and a global level distribution of, oh, right. of so, uh, so, RCP apps. In, in addition to people using Pulse to sort of, like you were saying, I'm, I'm kind of repeating what you're saying, but to manage their own development tool set, if you will. There's people who have built things on top of Eclipse RCP and they can use Pulse as sort of like a configuration mechanism, or they are they are using Pulse. Yeah, right? absolutely. We've got some very large distributions already. One of, one version of our Pulse product is uh, a customizable, it's called Pulse Private Label, which means it can completely be reskinned. It's a, uh, you know, a customer hosted type solution. And we've got a couple of distributions that are out there right now. One's managing uh, over 200,000 install sites of a particular customer service application. Yeah, the interesting things about Pulse is the, the sort of, um, I don't know, sort of the social aspect around it. Since, you know, there's sort of reviews and people can write things up like that. And, and I, wonder, uh, I wonder how that's been going for it. Uh, it's been it's been coming along uh, pretty well. The uh, really our, our biggest uptake has been on the uh, the enterprise level. Yeah. Uh, so there's not a lot of social aspects around that, but but also uh, the entry level points for Pulsar. There's a community edition that allows you to do individual, kind of put together your own tool stack and be able to access it from anywhere. It's a hosted solution uh, and that's free. And then in addition, we have what's called uh, uh, Team Edition right. uh, for Pulse. And that's for small or any size develop, developer team. But it's really geared around putting together you know, your tool stack, being able to share it with your team, uh, do updates and that kind of, that kind of thing. And then also we're, put, we're building in more social uh, networking type of, of capabilities so that, you know, as people talk about, talk back and forth, especially in virtual team environments, uh, that's, that kind of uh, interaction and, you know, be able to, to have everybody kind of share a context sure. is, is something that Pulse is, is uh, expanding out into. Yeah, yeah. I remember when I uh, first heard about that part, it made me remember uh, back when Emacs was sort of like the IDE, to, yeah. to, to, to liberally use that term of choice, you know, everyone was into sharing their .emacs files to sort of like right. show off the configuration yeah. that they had and all yeah. their, their stuff like that. And you were old. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of enterprise, one of the other things you mentioned was the, the, the blue edition of yes. what you have that mm -hmm. services sort of the, the web sphere That's world. That's actually been something that we've, we've for, for quite a few years, we've provided a, uh, an application server connector in our MyEclipse Enterprise Workbench tooling uh, for WebSphere for basically allowing develop, uh, J2E developers to be able to interact, uh, deploy, and test and debug against WebSphere. But it wasn't very good because WebSphere is kind of a it's a very different animal with res you know relative to most of the other applications uh, J2E application servers that are out there. Uh, we had a number of customers that were complaining about. Uh, 
looking at RAD, well, IBM's rational uh, tooling and, and asking us, like, hey, we love everything you've got because our feature sets were, uh, feature the features that we supported were actually much richer than what RAD was providing and they were buying My Eclipse and RAD in addition. They're like, can you help us just you know, right. improve your they connector? They want to consolidate their right. tool. Right, so they're so they they're like, just give us a better WebSphere integration story. In addition to that, when, when uh, IBM uh, basically discontinued support for the uh, WSAD 5.1, which is the, the predecessor for, for uh, Rational Application Developer. Uh, that left a, a number of really big companies just hanging. And so they immediately called us and said, we're looking for an alternative right now. How can you help us? And then also help us with supporting our old 5.1 projects, and then also give us a, a pathway to be able to upgrade and, and, and adopt some of the newer right. uh, Java E technology. So right out of the box, you know, we have a, a, a lot of interest from a lot of uh, the corporate customers that have a long legacy uh, support issue with their WSAD projects. So, and we've been supporting uh, Webs for 5.1, uh, you know, going way back, uh, you know, that app server and the tool stack uh, you know, in our traditional tool, that, that influenced us to actually step back and look at what are the things we could do to, to for a developer that's specifically focused on uh, supporting, it has to develop and, and deploy to WebSphere 5.1, 6, 6 1, 7, you know, right. that, that whole uh, lineage of, of uh, sort of versions multi -web of WebSphere deployment. Right. right, and we've supported them and we know them pretty, we know them actually very well, so we, uh, we said, well, let's just push the My Eclipse tool set a little bit further out and focus specifically on WebSphere developers. And, and so that, that led us to release Blue last year and then we've continued to support okay. two weeks ago. We rolled out uh, My Eclipse 7.1 which, uh, which allows My Eclipse users that uh, have a, basically allows My Eclipse to be able to, uh, to operate w on top of uh, RAD projects. So right, right. so right now there's no um, so they're not so my, they're my not eclipse can, is compatible with the the project that exactly, rad, the stuff right. that rad puts mm -hmm. out right so right so you just fire up my eclipse point it at your your rad project suck it in boom away you go so you're able to run on top of the same project structure uh, you know and you know don't have to upgrade or do anything like that with your project what's the uptake of the 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 blue stuff man it's been very good especially with the um, uh, with the you know the economy's driving some some customers to evaluating others are looking at they want to be able to move quicker on on certain technologies and rad hasn't moved at the velocity that they you know of their interest and so we have a very rapid you know delivery cycle so we usually release every two months uh, having upgrades constantly and we take a lot of customer feedback and try to turn that in back into our product iterations as we move and forward. And you guys have also been doing some uh, some mobile stuff if I remember correctly, right? Yes, absolutely. I'm leading a new new mobile web initiative and uh, we've got two aspects of that. One is there's an open source component and then a commercial component. Our commercial component is known as my, excuse me, it's known as as the uh, mobile web Studio. Yeah. Our focus there is on. We've already we've been developing web uh, developer tools for a number of years, uh, and we've had a number of customers that have come to us specifically uh, as the iPhone has gained more and more popularity. Uh, our customers have asked and said, "Hey, what we want to do is we want to be able to target some of our web content, or we want to be able to, to have some of our services and and a play onto the, on the iPhone." Right. Uh, the uh, the the. You know, the party line has been that, oh, well, in order for it to have a really good iPhone experience, you're going to have to write native. It's going to require Objective-C. You're going to have to go through App Store to deployment. And they just, like, it's a complete turn off. Uh, it's kind of like, oh, I go through this whole lock-in So the thing. question we've gotten is, like, I've got all these web developers. You know, what would you do, Genuatech, you know, if you were if you were trying to address this? So we sat down and we looked at, over the last year, we've been following the advances uh, in, uh, you know, the traditional HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, and all of them have moved. It, 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 there have been it, key advances that have made it uh, very attractive to build some really compelling UIs in, on top of uh, top of that technology base. Enterprise customers that are interested in targeting for the iPhone are they want an iPhone type look and feel or a theme, right, an right. iPhone theme in their web applications so that and it doesn't have to be perfect but get it close and so uh, so what we've been demonstrating here at EclipseCon is a uh, the first an early release version that we have of uh, Mobile Web Studio that demonstrates a picture perfect type of what you see type of uh, what you see what you get type of and it's all in web technology it's like all built saying. on top of right, right it's built on top of a custom version of webkit for swt integrates with uh so and we're open we're going to be open sourcing that through our uh, 
through our affiliation or leadership on a project called Blinky, which was just approved. Just real here. quick, the, Blink yeah, the story yeah. behind Blinky, I always have to tell it, we, when we wrote the original proposal for a mobile web uh, developer tool stack through Eclipse, uh, when I wrote that, it was uh, originally called it Firefly. And uh, due to some naming conflict issues, we had to rename it. And uh, as a result, we thought, well, we like everybody was telling us, we love the Firefly theme. Sorry, you have to change the name. So Blinky, spelled with a B-L-I in B-L-I-N-K-I, is the Jamaican English word for, for fireflies fire. so, we, uh, so we just stuck with it's just a blinky bug it's you know? also so, one of uh, matt gronig's like rabbit characters if i remember <laughs> like before, remember before the simpsons he had a bunch of characters that were yes, rabbits yeah, and i think blinky right. was one of them yeah other people uh, can uh, have, have asked us if it's related to the uh uh the pac-man oh uh, I yeah i think it was a little ghost guy or something they were yeah and i think Batman. the three-eyed fish in the so, simpsons was named blinky, blinky. right <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's interesting because the, there is um i see i see a lot of I guess you would call them web developers. Who they're they're fine doing web applications and everything, but there's there's they're more they're slightly interested in other options that they have to use their web their web development techniques to get mm -hmm. to other platforms, whether that's like desktop RAAs or in the mo mobile devices and things like that. Right. And, and like you're saying, I mean it is, I mean it's it's the cliche to say it, but it is remarkable how much the iPhone motivates people to just develop for it. Oh, which absolutely, is, just, is really the new set a new benchmark. Yeah. And, uh, establish the mind share about what a smartphone really is and what it should look like, you know, going forward. So, it set a it set a new baseline to you got to clear that bar, you know, going forward to to be cool. And, and so does, does Blinky address other platforms, I, I, like other mobile platforms? Or? It, it, it will. Actually, yeah. uh, Blinky, the open source component of that, is really meant to, to build a community of uh, not just, uh, well, okay, Apple's not a, Apple's not a, a, a player in the Eclipse uh, ecosystem. Right. Uh, I mean, they've, they've opted out of that. What we're doing is, is part of, by supporting, uh, supporting the iPhone uh, it, with our efforts, is it, it establishes, it, everybody can identify with it very quickly. You know, it, it sells itself. Probably yeah, the best yeah. way to describe it's it. What pe it's, it's what the, the market is demanding at the moment. A absolutely. Yeah. But but the other carriers, uh, I mean the other handsets, RIM, you know the Nokia's, uh, Motorola's, others are are also very interested. And um, and again, we're fo Blinky is initially focused on what we're what we're contributing yeah. to the project is uh, is WebKit based uh, technology for the for handsets that support. Uh, to support WebKit, the newer versions of WebKit. We're concentrating on that, so it's 2009 going forward is really kind of where, where our initial interest is. And so we've talked to Rem, uh, and they're, they're already very interested in, in increasing their, uh, their activity here at, at, at Eclipse. So uh, definitely want to be working with them more, supporting some of the storms and the other yeah, uh, yeah. their product line going forward as well. Well, while the iPhone's a competitor for Rim and all these other people, it's also nice to take advantage of renewed interest in developing for the mobile platform. Oh, I yeah. think that uh, that the mobile web, based on the the newer we call it JCH JavaScript CSS3 oh, right, and uh, right. HTML, uh, we, the, the JCH technology stack. Uh, the newer version, 2009 version, is is really compelling in what you can you can develop and um, some of the examples. I mean, some of the demos and stuff we were showing here, it it was a showstopper. Everybody that walked by our booth, they were like, I got to see that, <laughs> you know, because uh, because they could not believe that it was uh, a, basically a web application running because it was so themed out in a in a very um, almost pixel perfect. Right. level of, uh, for, for the iPhone theme. Great. Well, uh, that, that was a pretty nice update of what, uh, what Genuitech's up to. Great. So, thanks for taking all this time with us. Well, thank you.